A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Taken from Proverbs 18, verse 20. This passage is way too deep to read alone. I suppose we ought to get a grasp of the whole chapter, but man, you can cross-reference so much for unique perfection and apply this wisdom in so many ways. Truly living and active. Solomon was a rare breed. Got me reading his father's Psalm 23, the whole book of Malachi, nourishment to my soul. I can't believe there are some out there that call God's word a book of fairy tales. Straight tripping, this book has power to slay. Imagine praying with this sword. And now from Psalm 23, the Psalm of David says this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You know, as I, when I typically read this passage, the part that stands out is a part that mentions the valley of the shadow of death. And I can say that many of us believe there are moments where we feel like we are walking through this type of valley. But today I'm reminded that this valley that we walk through is not ours. You know, this place is not our home. And if it's the shadow of death, well, God has come to give us life and that much more abundantly. You know, I was moved uh, to read the book of Malachi a few days ago. As I've been meditating on Proverbs 18.20, which I read a little earlier, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Imagine if by which everything we speak is edifying to our soul. We know that the words that come out of our heart, our hearts that are deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But truly the word of God, if we were to speak the word of God out of our mouths, you know, Jesus mentioned that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if we fill our hearts with the word of God, then we will speak it. But the blessing is this, 
another blessing here. Not only will we nourish our souls, but it says a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. So, so important, you know, we read and read that um, the word of God is important to read, to know. But what's, I think, more important is to meditate on the word. But you need to read it to meditate, of course. Um, you know, Psalm, the first Psalm, the very first Psalm says this, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Another one of my favorites is um, Psalm 128. And this is what it says. Blessed is every one who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Amen. Very important to produce good fruit. And you know how they say that the words have power. I would say that uh, actions do not speak louder than words. Actually, words speak louder than actions because words can produce action. Action cannot produce words. Not unless it's the action of God. But the word of the Lord, that's the one thing that will not ever perish. It will stand forever. And so, um, I'm going to read from Malachi. Malachi is a very short book. It's only four chapters. Very prophetic book. I may skip around. I'm going to start in verse 1 of chapter 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord. Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated, and laid waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Even though Edom has said, we have been impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they may build, but I will throw down. They shall be called the territory of the wickedness and the people against whom the Lord 
will have indignation forever. Your eyes shall see and you shall say the Lord is magnified beyond the border of Israel. A son's father. Honor his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts to you priests who despise my name yet you say in what way have we despised your name you offer defiled food on my altar but say in what way have we defiled you by saying the table of the lord is contemptible and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice if it is not evil is it not evil and when you Offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? But now entreat God's favor, that he may be gracious to us. While this is being done by your hands, will he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts, who is there even among who would shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from your hands. For from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place, incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it in that you say the table of the Lord is defiled and its fruit, its food is contemptible. You also say, oh, what a weariness. And you sneer at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick thus you bring an offering should i accept this from your hand says the lord but cursed be the deceiver who has in his flock a male and takes a vow but sacrifices to the lord what is blemished for i am a great king thus says the lord of hosts and my name is to be feared among the nations and now O priest this commandment is for you if you will not hear and it and if you will not take it to heart to give glory to my name says the lord of hosts i will send a curse upon you and i will curse your blessings yes i have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart behold i will rebuke your descendants and spread refuse on your faces and refuse of your solemn feasts and one will take you away with it and you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him, one of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turned away from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should keep knowledge and people should seek the law from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you have departed from the way. You have caused many to stumble to the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, I also have made you contemptible and base before all the people because you have not kept my ways but have shown partiality in the law. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously with one another by profaning the covenant of the fathers? Judah has dealt treacherously and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned 
the Lord's holy institution which he loves. He has married the daughter of a foreign god. May the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob the man who does this, being awake and aware, yet who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts? And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying, so he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with good will from your hands. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with violence says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we wearied him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or where is the God of justice? Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver he will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. And I will come near for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans and against those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me says the lord of hosts for i am the lord do not i do not change therefore you are not consumed o sons of jacob yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them return to me and i will return to you says the lord of hosts but you said in what way shall we return will a man rob god yet you have robbed me but you say in what way have we robbed you in tithes and offerings you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the proud blessed for those who do wickedness and are raised up they even tempt God and go free. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to another, to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before them for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I will make them my jewels. 
and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will stumble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Amen. Powerful little book. We will discern good from evil. You know, good from evil is not an easy task to discern. Um, in the book of Hebrews, um, there is a passage that I love. Um, I believe it's in Hebrews. come back to me but um I wanted to make note in Revelation uh, my favorite pas passage in Revelation is Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 it says this Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Amen. That's, that's the goal of the Christian is to dine with Jesus. And, um, So I believe um, the passage I was thinking about earlier was uh, just a moment ago was in the book of Hebrews. Uh, you can't get past this because I think it's important. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5 it seems. Um, yes. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 5, verse starting in verse 12, reading through um, chapter 6. Let's see, verse uh, 6. Okay, here we go. Chapter 5, verse 12 through chapter 6, verse 6. For though by this time you ought to be teachers... You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age, that is, those who by reason 
of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of the hands of resurrection, of the dead and of eternal judgment and this we will do if god permits for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the holy spirit and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of God and put him to an open shame amen and so let us pray this is uh, lots of passages here Heavenly Father for whomever is listening to this Lord God I pray for blessings Lord I pray that that you would burn a desire in their heart to not only read the word of God as that is a start, but to truly be nourished by it, Lord, to meditate on it day and night, to think about your word in every circumstance, Lord God, in every issue in every life instance as they walk lord will you walk with them teach them lord teach them how to use the word in their own life that they may glorify your name Lord God, as they draw near to you, draw near to them. And may they see the nourishment that you have before them in the natural and in the spiritual as a blessing, as something that's undefiled. As they eat a bite of whatever is eaten as they read whatever word they read from you that they would be nourished body and soul and lord every single prayer that is in their heart i pray lord god that you would answer them that you would answer each prayer lord precisely but Lord, blow their minds by using your own word, the word that was spoken from your mouth. Breathe it into their nostrils. Breathe it back into their mouths that it may flow into their hearts. So much, Lord, that their hearts would overflow with so much of your word, Lord God, that the only thing that they could do is speak it out again and bless others. And so Lord, I ask that you perform your word, Lord, every single thing that I read just moments ago, perform it, Lord. Be glorified, Lord. Take all the glory. Let us walk in it. But let us walk in your word to glorify your name. And with thanksgiving, I pray and I thank you, Lord, for every piece of wisdom that you've given me today, every prophetic vision that you just gave me today based on the word that was spoken. I thank you, Lord.
I thank you, Lord, for being in control of all things, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for having me in the palm of your hands and not letting anyone snatch me away from you. May everyone bow down to your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. I thank you. I love you and I praise you. Amen. God bless the ears that have heard this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.